Hello everyone, welcome to Karma Education. This is the channel for UGC NET education subject and it has a target to cover the whole syllabus of UGC NET education subject. I have completed uh, the subunit A of unit 2 and I have started to present my view on uh, subunit B of unit 2. Thank you for your appreciation. Stay tuned viewers. In this video, I am Konkonapal going to talk about the last topic of this subunit B of unit 2 that is the process of policy formulation. Process of policy formulation uh, includes seven subtopics or you can say this is the steps of process of policy formulation. Okay, so these are analysis of the existing situation, generation of policy options, evaluation of policy options, making the policy decision, planning of policy implementation, policy impact assessment and subsequent policy cycles. Okay, let's start. Process of policy formulation. Before starting this topic, we need to clear about what is policy. To have detailed idea on policy, viewer can go my playlist and watch the previous videos related to policy. But here I am just explaining what is policy. Policy is a set of principles or guidelines or you can say rules which guide decisions of an organization to achieve desired goals. Okay, policy is nothing but a set of principles which guide decisions of an organization to achieve desired goals. When policymaker frame a set of proposal as solution of the arised problem, then it is called policy formulation. What is policy formulation? When, when policymaker frame a set of proposal as a response or as a solution of the arised problem within an organization, then it is called policy formulation. It has a specific process. Analysis of existing situation is the first step of policy formulation process. The total policy formulation process has seven steps. First one is analysis of existing situation. Analysis of existing situation. The very first step of policy formulation process is analysis of existing situation. In this step, a policy maker will investigate or will critically analyze the exact existing situation of political, economic, demographic, cultural and social issues. And to do this, they will analyze the background of uh, a country, then political context, economic context, education sector and dynamic change. And the first one is, in terms of analyzing of existing situation, the first step is country background. Educational policy differs from overpopulated country to less populated country. Diverse cultured country like India to single cultured country like Nepal. Social stratification. It means when the people of society is categorized on the basis of socio-economic sectors that is wealth, income, race, gender, occupation, social status, etc. Then the educational policy should be framed to meet the need of this diverse category of the people of society. Then location or geography. There is another important factor that should be analyzed by the policy maker. Different geographical areas like mountainous region, plain land, riverine, desert, longitudinal as well as latitudinal extent of a particular area demands their diverse need which has a great impact on policy formulation. So the entire aspects of a country should be analyzed initially at the very first stage of policy process, formulation process. The next is political context. Values and preferences, various values and preferences of national political elite. National political elite means national, you can say the ruling parties. Okay, national political elite means ruling parties, uh, parties elite member. Okay, their values directly monitors the educational policy formulation. 
every political parties have their own institutional structure and based on their ethics they influence on the policy formulation process they may not have qualified educational background national political elite they may not have qualified educational background but they have power to take part in educational policy formulation so educational elite sector should have considerable autonomy educational elite sector okay who will uh, take part in the policy, uh, policy formulation process they should have the considerable autonomy in the educational policy formulation so this is the political context this also should be evaluated or analyzed by the policy maker at the step of the in the step of the analysis of existing situation economic context present macroeconomic situation would be nurtured by the analyst or policy maker macroeconomy includes national productivity growth rate gdp unemployment etc national productivity measures per capita gdp per employed person per hour work it is very simple that national productivity measures per capita gdp per employed person per hour work whereas gdp gross domestic product measures the market value of all the goods and services that produced in a specific time period growth rate or economic growth rate it is the percentage of change in the value of all of the goods and services that produced in a nation during a specific period okay as compared to an earlier period so what is the difference between growth rate and gdp gdp measures the market value of all the goods and services produced in a specific time period whereas growth rate it is the uh, measurement of the percentage of change in the gdp okay and unemployment unemployment occurs when a person who is actively searching for employment but he is unable to find any work so this macroeconomic situation has impact on education sector need to understand the future trend in order to assess what the economy requires from the education sector it is very much needed thing very much needed thing to understand by the policy maker based on these policy formulation process have to start what is the need of the society as well as the economy okay next for uh, next point is education sector policy maker should analyze the existing uh, major educational sectoral issues okay these issues may be explored under six categories like access to educational opportunities is there any issues or problem related to the access to educational opportunities then equity in the distribution of educational services then structure of the education system then external efficiency and institutional arrangements so is there any problem any defects or any issues related to these six categories this should be analyzed by the policy maker in the step of exist analysis of the existing situation then dynamic change suppose any obstacle has come in present situation in a sector then need to be evaluated the force or power of obstacle very simple it is that if any obstacle has come in present situation in any sector then need to be evaluated the force or power of obstacle how much powerful it is okay this is the dynamic change evaluate the power of obstacle is the dynamic change all the stakeholders like teachers students parents employers etc they experience the actual obstacle which arises in educational sector but they don't have power to change the policy so the analyst or policy maker need to take opinion from them to analyze existing situation because they are the actual sufferer of the obstacle or the problems 
द नेक्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन प्रोसेस इज जेनरेशन ऑफ पॉलिसी ऑप्शन वेन द प्रेजेंट सिचुएशन ऑफ द सेक्टर एंड इट्स कंटेक्सट इज डिस्टर्ब बाई अ प्रॉब्लम और पॉलिटिकल डिसीशन और ए रिओर्गनाइजेशन स्कीम देन ए न्यू पॉलिसी आर इज जेनरेटेड ओके नाउ वॉट इज द पॉलिसी ऑप्शन पॉलिसी ऑप्शन आर द प्रेस्क्राइब्ड डिसीशन और सॉल्यूशन एज द रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ एराइज प्रॉब्लम पॉलिसी ऑप्शन आर जेनरेटेड बाई पॉलिसी मेकरस पॉलिसी ऑप्शन कैन बी जेनरेटेड बाई द फॉलोइंग फोर मोड्स to accommodate the disequilibrium which uh, is created in any situation a uh, sorry any sector okay so these four modes of policy uh, options generation are the systematic mode the incremental mode and the ad hoc mode and the importation mode first one is the systematic mode the systematic mode is the preferred or best method for generating policy options to formulate policy options policy maker will analyze the generation of data of that particular sector then prioritize the options and after that sort out the data and finalize the preferable options or more preferred options so the sequence is like data generation then the policy option formulation and prioritizing the options and finally refining the options this is the systematic mode after that the incremental mode the incremental mode is also known as acting out approach in this mode of policy option generation policy maker seeks to adjust the present difficulties by providing increment to the employees rather than to anticipate or predict future ones okay then the next point is the ad hoc mode emergence of a new political event is not internal problem of education sector but educational system need to make some changes or adjustment for the emergence of new political event so when the problem is outside the education sector then the ad hoc mode is used ad hoc means when needed means on temporary basis to make an adjustment with the arised difficulties this is the ad hoc mode the fourth point is the importation mode a policy which is adopted elsewhere and which can meet meet the need of a particular group of society that can be imported okay the policy which is adopted elsewhere which ha, uh, has the potentiality to meet the need of a particular group of society that can be imported this mode is called importation mode so this is the four uh, modes to accommodate the uh, disequilibrium situation within a within an organization next is evaluation of policy options policy options are evaluated if alternative scenarios are developed alternative scenarios means it is an imaginary situation how an Im imaginary situation would be created before implementation of a policy policy maker assume that if an implemented policy is compared with the present problem situation then the imaginary situation would be created okay so the transition from existing to the imaginary situation that is evaluated in terms of desirability affordability and feasibility first is desirability desirability indicates what would make the option desirable to all the stakeholders policy policy option should have the potentiality to be worth or eligible to all stakeholder for example you can take the mid demil scheme that if mid demil scheme this should, this should have if, if it is implemented then it should have the potentiality to raise the nutrition level of each child okay so 
this should the every or uh, you can say the generated policy option should have the potentiality to be worth or eligible to all the stakeholders clear how to make able to exist with the dominant ideology it means policy option should have capacity to exist with other dominant ideology for example uh, again you can take this uh, mid term scheme that if it is implemented then it should have the capacity to exist with the other dominant ideology like equalization of education okay the next is affordability affordability in the sense the fiscal cost social uh, political alternative economic cost every cost need to be evaluated at this stage for the evolution evaluation of policy options private cost opportunity cost and political cost these three types of costs should be considered for the evaluation of policy options private cost private uh, private cost is any cost that a person pays in order to buy or produce goods and services the private costs would be shared by the consumer the private costs would be shared by the consumer if so then what happens to the poorer group if private cost would be shared by the consumer then how poorer group will pay okay to increase affordability of policy option policy maker should pay attention to the share of private cost it must be affordable to all stakeholders okay next is opportunity cost opportunity cost is loss of other alternatives when one is chosen loss of other alternatives when one is chosen is there any other measures which might be beneficial for education system but would have to be forgotten or have to go without pay attention for the current proposal this is also very important uh, uh, thing to evaluate the policy option next is political cost political cost means uh, polit- policy options should be favored by one particular group policy options should be favored by one particular group so that government will pay to provide political cost clear next is feasibility human resources fiscal resources time must be feasible or attainable to evaluate policy uh, various policy options so so this is the uh, step of evaluation of policy options for the formulation of policy now making the policy decision based on the analysis of existing situation various policy options are already generated and even the evaluation of policy option is also completed now the final stage is making policy decision these decisions initiates the actions to be taken to implement the policy the entire policy for formulation framework must be unambiguous and clear same opinion of maximum number of committee member is needed for the making of policy decision next is planning of policy implementation which is very much important stage of policy formulation process policy implementation is the transformation of policy decision into action policy decisions are taken with the consent of the people who will put the policy into operation the outcome of the policy implementation cannot be anticipated early clear now there are some uh, rules for the educational policy implementation implementation planning of new policy must be included in policy assessment feedback should be obtained during implementation reassessment of the policies should be done for concrete implementation of policy so this is the planning of policy implementation stage of policy formulation process
policy impact assessment policy has been implemented policy uh, now policy impact should be evaluated okay so for this the policy impact assessment will evaluate that which policy have the most impact which is truly admirable or commendable policy impact assessments are formal and evidence based procedure scoping aggregation comparison of options analysis coherence data presentation involvement etc etc are the methods of policy impact assessment the last stage is subsequent policy cycles the process of policy design planning implementation impact assessment and redesign are iterative or continual but in long term policy analysis this fashion is not carried out if we take an example of educational policy then the situation would be like when policy change is needed once in educational area a policy process often begins de novo means starting from the beginning or a new starting okay and may duplicate the new starting may duplicate much of the analysis derivation of alternative options evaluation and planning that carried out earlier clear when a policy change is needed within uh, educational area a policy process often begins de novo means new starting and this new starting may duplicate much of the analysis derivation of alternative options evaluation and planning that carried out earlier it is a never ending process once implementation has been completed and policy outcomes are forthcoming a policy impact assessment uh, stage ensues leading potentially impact assessment to a new policy cycle okay this is the policy formulation process it starts from analysis of the existing situation then generation of policy options evaluation of policy options and finally making the policy decision planning of policy implementation is followed by making the policy decision policy impact assessment is followed by planning of policy implementation and after that subsequent policy cycle from subsequent policy cycle a new policy may arise okay so this is uh, a never ending process or you can say this is uh, an iterative or continual process be connected with my channel to get more information about each topic of ugc net education syllabus i am also taking online class for ugc net education subject interested viewers can comment